Lesson 7. Mission to my neighbor. Memory text. He answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Luke chapter 10 verse 27. Loving God is important. It involves faith, devotion, and reverence. We worship, pray, and live in accordance with our beliefs and values. Loving your neighbor is part of this love for God, in whole heart, soul, and strength. We are commanded to treat others with kindness, compassion, and empathy. Neighbor is all fellow human beings. Let's promote a sense of community, care, and moral responsibility. Loving your neighbor means showing goodwill, helping those in need, and promoting harmonious relationships with others. The question of questions. In Luke chapter 10 verse 25, a lawyer asked Jesus a question to test him. Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? The lawyer asked this question to test Jesus and engage in a theological debate. He wanted to see how Jesus would respond to a question about the core principles of the Jewish faith and the path to eternal life. This question was a common topic of discussion among Jewish scholars and religious leaders during that time. Jesus, in response, asked the lawyer to explain what he thought the law said about inheriting eternal life, leading to the famous parable of the Good Samaritan in the subsequent verses. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 30 to 32, Paul underscores the importance of the belief in the resurrection and eternal life. In these verses, Paul is making several points. Paul begins by highlighting the dangers and hardships he and other believers face as they live out their faith. This includes physical threats and difficulties. Paul faces the possibility of death every day for the sake of his faith. He is willing to endure suffering and even death for the gospel and the hope of eternal life. If there is no hope of resurrection and eternal life, then there is no reason to endure suffering and persecution. The Christian faith is in vain. The belief in the resurrection and the promise of eternal life are central to the Christian hope and motivation to live faithfully. Paul emphasizes the vital importance of the resurrection and the hope of eternal life in sustaining the Christian faith and providing meaning and purpose, even in the face of hardship and suffering. We will encounter insincere people, and we might be persecuted while doing it. Remember the words of Paul, and how we have this blessed hope of eternal life with Jesus. Jesus' Method and Response In his responses to the lawyer, Jesus gives us a lesson in how to deal with people of all walks as they challenge us. We are to promote the true word of God, and do so in a non-confrontational way. Jesus started with prophecy. Bible prophecy is a good first step to understanding the path to salvation. In Matthew chapter 26 verse 56, the disciples, upon witnessing his arrest, abandon Jesus and flee, fulfilling the prophecy of Jesus being deserted by his followers during this crucial moment. We can encourage others to study and read the Bible for themselves, and not just take our word. Acts chapter 17 verse 11 highlights the importance of critical thinking and a willingness to test the teachings of religious leaders against the sacred texts. It encourages believers to be discerning and to ensure that what they are taught aligns with the teachings of the Bible. Jesus alone is our source of salvation. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 3 underscores the foundational Christian belief in the redemptive work of Jesus through his death on the cross, which is essential for salvation and is in line with the prophetic writings of the Old Testament. If we encounter others and use only the Bible, 
our motives and truthfulness can be better presented. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 gives us the foundational belief that the Bible is the inspired word of God, and it serves as a comprehensive guide for the faith and practice of Christians. Jesus relied on and had reverence for the written word in his teachings and interactions. Christians are to prioritize and trust in the Bible as a central and unchanging source of divine revelation. Rejecting any theological or philosophical reasoning that lessens trust in the Bible is essential for maintaining integrity of the Christian faith. We must remain grounded in the truth of God's Word. To inherit eternal life. The lawyer's question to Jesus was a test or challenge. He asked, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? This was a common theological question of the time, and the lawyer was trying to see if Jesus could provide a satisfactory answer. In response, Jesus quotes two commandments from the Old Testament. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind. This comes from Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 5, and emphasizes the importance of wholehearted love and devotion to God. Love your neighbor as yourself. This comes from Leviticus chapter 19 verse 18, and stresses the importance of showing love and compassion to one's fellow human beings. Jesus essentially condenses the entire moral and ethical framework of the Old Testament into these two commandments. He is teaching that the key to eternal life or a right relationship with God is to love God with your entire being and to love your neighbor as yourself. James chapter 2 verse 18 But someone will say, You have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. While both passages stress the importance of living out one's faith through good deeds and actions, they differ in their specific focus and context. Jesus' answer was about loving God and one's neighbor as a means to inherit eternal life. James emphasizes that faith without corresponding actions is lifeless and incomplete. Together, they offer a well-rounded perspective on the relationship between faith and works in the Christian walk. Both faith and good deeds, especially to those in need, should make up a believer's life. Loving others as we love ourselves. In Matthew chapter 22 verses 37 to 40, Jesus provides a profound answer when questioned about the greatest commandment in the law. He condenses the law into two fundamental principles. Love God wholeheartedly, and love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus suggests that these two commandments encompass the essence of the entire law and the teachings of the prophets. Love is central in both our relationship with God and in how we treat others. While Matthew chapter 22 verses 37 to 40 and Luke chapter 10 verses 27 to 28 share a similar theme, they are distinct passages with some differences. One notable difference is that in Luke, after stating these commandments, Jesus affirms the expert's response and tells him to do these things to inherit eternal life. So while the core message is consistent, emphasizing love for God and love for others, the specific wording and context have some variations. Galatians chapter 5 verse 1, For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command, Love your neighbor as yourself. The command to love God and others is viewed as a natural outflow or expression of the faith that one has in Jesus. It's not about trying to earn salvation through good works, but rather a response to the love and grace that God has already bestowed. When one truly understands and believes in the love of God, it should lead to a transformed life characterized by love for God and love for others. The Good Samaritan Story Today 
The Good Samaritan story in Luke chapter 10 is a parable told by Jesus in response to a question from a legal expert who asked, Who is my neighbor? The parable is found in Luke chapter 10 verses 25 to 37. In the story, a man is traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho when he is attacked by robbers, stripped of his clothes, beaten and left half dead by the side of the road. A priest and a Levite, both religious figures, pass by without offering help. However, a Samaritan, a member of a group despised by many Jews at the time, comes along. Despite the historical animosity between Jews and Samaritans, the Samaritan shows compassion and helps the injured man. He tends to his wounds, takes him to an inn and pays for his care. The parable is often seen as a lesson on compassion, mercy, and the true meaning of being a neighbor. Jesus uses the example of the despised Samaritan to challenge societal prejudices and expectations. The Samaritan's actions exemplify the command to love your neighbor as yourself, emphasizing that kindness and compassion should extend beyond cultural and social boundaries. The story encourages followers of Jesus to demonstrate love and mercy to everyone, even those who might be considered outsiders or enemies. It teaches that true neighborliness transcends social, cultural, and religious barriers, emphasizing the universal importance of compassion and care for others. Begin praying daily for someone who is different from you, or even for someone you may not personally like. List at least three names of your acquaintances, non-Adventists. Identify their needs, emotional, physical, social, and consider how you can minister personally to those needs. What can you do practically for them in the coming week?